This video tutorial introduces many of the key features of the Raven Pro interface, focusing on the basics of opening a sound file, navigating the default waveform and spectrogram views, and using selections to play or zoom in on particular parts of a sound file. I'll be working with Raven Pro 1.5 on a Mac. If you use Raven on Windows or Linux, a few details may look slightly different, but all of Raven's functionality is the same across all operating systems. To launch Raven, double-click its icon on your desktop. I'll now maximize the Raven window. When Raven is first launched, you see the empty Raven desktop. This is the area where Raven will display one or more sound files. Let's go ahead and open a sound file. For this demonstration, I'm going to work with a file in the folder of example sounds that's included when Raven is installed on in your computer. To open a sound file, click on the File menu and choose Open Sound Files. You can also use the Ctrl-O or Command-O keyboard shortcut to get to the Open File dialog. When Raven's first installed, the Open Sound Files command will take you by default to the Examples folder. Let's choose the file called Chestnut Sided Warbler. Notice that when I select a file from the file list by clicking once, the side panel in the dialog box shows information about the file, including its length, which in this case is only a couple of seconds. When I click Open, I see another dialog box where I can specify various options regarding how to open the file. For now, I'm going to ignore all of this, accept all the default settings, and just click OK. When Raven first opens a sound file, by default it's displayed in a sound window that looks like this. I'll maximize the size of the window by clicking here. The default sound window contains two panels, or views. Raven can display several different types of views of a sound. By default, it shows a waveform view above and a spectrogram view below. We'll talk more about other types of views in a later video. We can have Raven label the views in the window by turning on line titles in the list of window components in the sidebar. We can selectively hide or show each view by clicking the checkboxes in the list of views at the top of the sidebar. So I can hide the waveform, show the waveform, hide the spectrogram, show the spectrogram. For now, I'll leave both views displayed. At the top of the Raven window, there are several toolbars with buttons that enable quick access to Raven functions. To play the sound in the current window, click the play button in the toolbar. If we want to hear details of the sound that are too fast to make out in a normal playback, we can slow it down by typing in a playback rate here. For example, to hear this song at one quarter normal speed, we can type in 0.25, press enter, and then click play again. You can also increase the playback rate to faster than normal by entering a value greater than 1. This is useful for very low-pitched sounds, like those of elephants and some whales, and for discerning patterns in very long structured sound sequences like songs of humpback whales. For now, I'm going to set the playback rate back to 1. Notice, by the way, that when I hover my mouse pointer over the play button, or any other graphical element in the Raven interface, Raven displays a tooltip indicating what that button does. At the left edge of each view is a narrow vertical button called the View Selection button, which is either white or light blue. The view with the blue View Selection button is called the Active View. You can activate a view by clicking its View Selection button or by clicking anywhere in that view. At any one time, 
You may have any number of views displayed, but only one view at a time is active. It's important to be aware of which view is active because some options or actions are available only for views of a certain type. We'll talk more about this shortly. The waveform view, also known as an oscillogram, shows the amplitude of the sound on the vertical axis versus time on the horizontal axis. Notice the units of the vertical axis, KU. KU stands for kilo units, but what's a unit? In this context, a unit of amplitude in Raven refers to the value of the individual digital samples that together constitute the audio recording. These units are proportional to the sound pressure received by the microphone. For now, don't worry about why this is in arbitrary units. We'll talk more about this in a later video. The spectrogram displays the relative power spectral density in the sound as a function of time and frequency. Power spectral density levels are shown by the color of the spectrogram. By default, Raven uses a grayscale color map to represent power spectral density, sometimes just called power, with darker pixels representing higher power values. Raven provides several different color maps for the spectrogram that you can choose from this drop-down list. For example, this is the cool color map, the hot color map, and here's a color map called Jet. I'm going to go back to the default grayscale color map for now. You can also invert or reverse the color map by clicking this button. With this inverted grayscale color map, lower power values are darker and higher power values are lighter. For now, I'm going to use the default grayscale color map with darker shades of gray representing higher power values. As I move the mouse pointer around on the spectrogram, the time, frequency, and power at the pointer location are displayed in the mouse measurement field at the bottom of the Raven window. You can see that lighter points in the spectrogram have lower power values and darker points have higher values. We can adjust the overall darkness of the spectrogram using the brightness slider here. We can also adjust the contrast using this contrast slider. Higher contrast displays fewer shades of gray between white and black. Sometimes the default brightness and contrast settings aren't optimal for seeing fine details of the spectrogram. It's a good idea to get in the habit of adjusting the brightness and contrast to allow you to clearly see as much detail as possible. This is a somewhat subjective process. I like to adjust settings so that the background is mostly white and only the darkest parts of the spectrogram are black. Something like this. If the brightness and contrast controls are disabled, that's because the spectrogram is not the active view. Just click on the View Selection button next to the spectrogram to activate it. We can zoom the active view in or out in the horizontal and vertical dimensions using the buttons next to the ends of the scroll bars in the lower right corner of the sound window. To zoom horizontally, use the buttons next to the horizontal scroll bar. The plus button zooms in, the minus button zooms out. To zoom vertically, use the buttons below the vertical scroll bar. The buttons that look like a horizontal or vertical bar with a short perpendicular bar at each end zoom back to the full horizontal or vertical extent of the view. So, to zoom to the full time extent of the view, I click on this button. Notice the tooltip says Zoom to All X. And to zoom to the full vertical extent, I click this button for Zoom to All Y. Notice that when I click the horizontal zoom buttons, both the spectrogram and the waveform zoom together. But when I click the vertical zoom buttons, only the spectrogram, which is the active view, zooms. Why the difference? 
In both views, the horizontal dimension represents the same physical quantity, namely time. But the vertical dimensions of the waveform and spectrogram views represent entirely different physical quantities. Remember that the vertical dimension of the waveform is proportional to sound pressure, whereas the vertical dimension of the spectrogram represents frequency. By default, views that share a dimension, like time in this case, are linked in that dimension so that they zoom and scroll together. Later, we'll see how you can unlink views, which can be very useful in some situations. If I zoom out horizontally beyond the end of the sound, Raven displays a gray background to indicate where the sound ends. If I zoom out vertically in the spectrogram, I eventually see a gray background above a certain frequency, indicating where the upper frequency limit of the recording is. This upper frequency limit is called the Nyquist frequency and is equal to one half the sampling rate of the digital audio recording. In this case, the Nyquist frequency appears to be around 22 kHz, indicating that this recording has a sample rate of around 44 kHz. To see the exact sample rate of the recording, I can click on the Information tab at the bottom of the left side panel. This will show me the sample rate and some additional information about the recording. To go back to the default view of the left side panel, click on the Layout tab. Let's zoom back to the full time extent of this sound now. And in the spectrogram, I'll zoom to the full frequency extent up to the Nyquist frequency, and then zoom in two steps in frequency so that the song of the bird more closely fills the available vertical space. If I want to play just part of a signal, I can use my mouse to draw a selection box around it on the spectrogram. For example, if I want to listen to just these last two syllables of this warbler song, I can draw a box around them like this, and then click play. And Raven plays just the time interval in the selection. That's very fast, and it's hard to make out exactly what the bird's doing. Remember that I can slow the playback rate down to hear more details in the sound by clicking here and typing in, for example, 0.25 to get a playback rate of one quarter normal speed, and then pressing enter. In addition to being used to limit playback, selections can also be used to zoom in for a closer look at a sound and are the key to making measurements. I can zoom in to see a magnified view of my selection by clicking the red square Zoom to Selection button in the bottom right corner of the window. To get back to seeing the full time and frequency extent of the signal, I can click the horizontal and vertical Zoom to All buttons again. Notice that the time boundaries of the selection also appear in the waveform, even though I drew the selection in the spectrogram. In fact, I can draw the selection in the waveform to begin with instead of in the spectrogram. In that case, the full frequency range of the spectrogram is selected. If I make another selection, the first one disappears. In our next video, we'll explain how to make selections persist and how to use them to make and export measurements on sounds of interest.